Hello people and welcome to yet another episode of Sandman's Tackle Time. Tonight we've got one on cart for you, for all the cod hunters out there, for all the cart lovers out there, and for those that have heard of cart but have never used it, this one's for you. Um, I'm going to go through a start of what I do to prepare my cart um, going from this stage. I would like to have gone from actual live edible crab, but at this time of the year they're getting very thin on the ground, they're out of season and I just can't really get hold of them. So I've went to the next best thing, uh, which is I've went and bought some from my local tackle shop, which happened to be Andy Rutherford's. I paid six ninety nine for it. You can buy it at North East Tattle, you can buy it at Fishing Republic, all around the same price roughly. Um, uh, there's a couple of lads on the straight to it, uh, Dave Ryan from Same Arbor, he does a cracking lad, does it in kilo slabs for about £20-25, pounds, something like that. So if you want to uh, get any off him and you're stuck getting in touch with us, I'll, I'll certainly put the two of you in touch with each other. Um, but if you don't want it in kilo slabs and you want it in finger form like I've got here, uh, Andy Rutherford's like to say £6.99 for four fingers, they're about 6-7 inches long, you get three batons out of one sausage. You could go even bigger and maybe just get two beatons out of each sausage if you feel that was the better thing to do. But to be honest with you, I've had three beatons out of one sausage and I've caught fish on them so it works. Anyway, before we go into the cart, I'll quickly talk through the stuff that you can use to actually pour it together. So, obviously if you're using cart, you couldn't just simply cut it into three, tie it on the end of your hook and cast it out because it would just simply fall off within seconds. You have to pour it into something, um, for those that's never used cart. Here I've got a selection of bandages and tights, and there's other bits and bobs that you can use, and that I've seen being used over the years. What I've seen being used uh, for, for cart is finger bandage, tights, various colours, I've seen black, tan, all different colours, um, cling film, I've even seen tin foil being used. Armour mesh, there's some armour mesh there. I've seen a, a wide variety of things being used and two keep on coming out top at all times for me. There's two names keep on coming back all the time for me. That's tights and finger bandages, always come back. I know you get lads that like the armour mesh, there it is there. Then you get lads that are too keen on it because it's quite expensive, it's, it's around about a tenner. Then I hear your lads saying, well, either armour mesh is a good idea, but it washes out too quick, so they don't use it. Um, I actually bought that, and I got advised off a few lads off our group saying, Paul, it washes out too quick, it's no good. I didn't know. I learnt the hard way. Um, so I'll pass it on to you guys. Um, armour mesh apparently doesn't cut the grain like. Um, anyway, so, there. first of all, if you want to give it a go, there it is there. It's armour mesh. 22 mil. I purchased this off uh, North East Tattle Supplies down there in Ryan. Um, I think it cost us about 10 11 pounds, something like that. I kind of comment on it because I've never used it. I was advised not to use it because it washes out too quick. I've left it in there and I left it at that. I was then advised to go on the tights, which I already knew. I've used it in the past with tights. I just wanted it something already in tube form, I guess, where tights, the wide, the same bit of a clock one for me, and then I heard about finger bandages. So I went to Boots, this is Boots' version, £2.49, there it is there. Comes in an old little applicator which you're not really going to use for what you want. But it's um, it's pretty stretchy, that uh, will go easily up to 22mm, which is what you want because it seems when you go and buy it out of a tackle shop, it is around about 22mm wide, so there's that one. Then I went to another pharmacy and I found this a shawl which is retailing for £3.46 and I think you get 4 metres in that one. Um, yes, you get 4 metres, I'll just open it up for you. They're all much the same basically, like there it is there. You just you get a little bit of tape on it, you just peel that back like that. Just cut that off so you can see it's very sticky. And there you go, and that's it. That's your finger bandage, simple as that. Already in the shape that you want. Anyway, I'm going to put this to one side, I'll just quickly wrap it up. Um, that's the shawl, 
tube gauze it's called, believe it or not. There you go, not finger bandage, tube gauze, if that helps. Then I've got another one. I've just got different variants of it so you can go out and get your own thing. I've seen this actually on eBay. Um, this one retailed for £3.35 from um, one of my local chemists around the doors there. Finger and toe bandage. Um, again, I think it's four metres. They're all said to be about the same length, four metres. There's some there which was 50, 55 pence, but it's a little bit wider. You can maybe persevere with it. But the thing I didn't like about that, the whole sink would be quite large, so I think it would probably wash out a little bit quicker. Then you come onto your tights. These tights here are out the pound shop, them ones there. And then you've got them tights there that come out of Asda, and obviously they cost two pound, um, from like I've just said, from Asda. Um, the work, it's as simple as that. They do work, and our lads that swear by them. There's lads out there that wouldn't dream of using anything else. But for me, they just seem to be a little bit of a clark one. Um, so I, I tend to favour the finger bandage. Anyway, that's what we're going to hear on tonight. I'm going to hear on the finger bandage. So I'm going to move them to one side. Put them to one side. Now we're left with this. Now this happens to be finger bandage slipped over a 22mm tube. There it is there. I'll show you how I've done that. So we'll get this one. Just tape off that bit here. And what you can do is, you just open it up, that's all, like that, and pop it over the top. And just as though you were um, peeling something back, I'll let you use your imagination, you just slide it all on. I know that doesn't look right. Anyway. If you look at that, there you go, there's four metres on there, four metres, this is what you do, pull a little bit off the end and put a simple granny knot in the end, there we go, just like that, pull it tight and we're going to trim off the excess, just like so, there you go, you're ready to go, you're going to drop your pellet straight down there, that'll come out, I'll show you how to do it and we'll go into there and do that in a minute. Actually, what I'll do is, if you don't mind, I'm going to take that one back off there. I'll put that back in the box because I've got one here that I was in the middle of using, and I prefer to use this one up first. So, same thing, there's the nut on the end, as you can see. Um, obviously, this has been used before, but I'm going to use it up. Anyway, so that's your finger bandage. The second thing that's been a bit paramount about this, and one thing I've noticed about using cart, is it defrosts very quickly. So, when you take it down there onto the pier and you try to keep it frozen, what's the best flask? Now, I got this one from Asda. I think it cost us six quid. It done an okay job. I got that one from Asda. I paid four quid. It done a better job than that, but I still didn't get a session out of it. It started to go softish at the end of the session. People were saying, try the food flasks. I thought, it's not a bad idea. Try the food flasks. And there's a food flask there. Complete and utter waste of time. No good whatsoever. So we'll put them three out the way. Then I had that guy sitting around the house. Um, I used to use it when I was out fishing. It was me, obviously my flask for carrying my tea or my coffee, wherever I was taking. But I don't drink that much tea, so it was a bit big. So I went and bought this guy, which was even better. Does me, it's enough tea and coffee, especially in the card night, when you just want to warm yourself up. So that I've been sitting around like a spell at a wedding, hidden out the way. I thought, oh, I've got a flask kicking about. I'll try this one. I put the pellets into there. I put the whole flask in the fridge. 
in the freezer without the lid on. Now whatever you do when you're putting cart in the freezer, try not to put it in your lass's freezer because it stinks. It's horrible stuff, it really is. Now one thing what I did, right, what we didn't tell her lass, is I put it in the freezer. And if she'd found out, I'd have been in more shit than a puff's prick. But fortunately, I managed to get my hands on my own beard freezer. So I've put all of it in there, so she didn't know it was in the bottom of the freezer. Happy days. Because like I see her, I'd have been in a bit of trouble if she'd found out what was in there. So try and get yourself a beard freezer, lads. You've got your beard freezer. You've put your pellets, as you're going to say, me mate, in a minute. You put that into there and put the whole thing in the freezer without the lid on. I've heard that you can break the seals on your, on your flask. So don't put the lid on and leave the whole thing in the freezer. I then put the lid on on one session. We went down, cut long story short, at the end of the session, they were like stone still. And the name of the flask is Thermos. And it's the same with that guy. Ignore all the stickers that I've just put on it. There's the name, Thermos. There's a shop in Sunderland that's opened up called The Range. If it's any help, any lads in Same, the northeast around here. I know there's another one down Stockton that stock these, the retail for around about £20. Just take a brew advice from me, lads. If you want something that keeps your beard fresh and frozen, pay the money, Thermos. I've been there, I've tried the majority of the rest, they didn't work for me. But Thermos, straight away, done the trick. So, I hope that helps. Anyway, that's enough about flasks. Now then, we're going to go onto the cart. How to make the cart. I'm going to put some gloves on. Now, did it sit there and say, ah, stop being soft, putting gloves on and this, that and the other. There's a method in me madness. Kill two birds with one stone. I'm putting gloves on because I don't want to go on my hands for a start off as I'm in the house. And second of all, I won't be watched back. Happy days. Right. So, we're going to open this packet up. As you can see, it's done. Right, I say this has come from Andy Rutherford's, 6 99 for a pack of four sausages. There it is there. I've got a bag here. I'm going to quickly discard that packet, get it out the way. As you can see, believe it or not, through that short space of time I've been talking, it's already started to defrost. Here I've got my fillet knife or fishing, and I'm just going to open them up like so, as you do. Right, and there's the other two. Right, so there you go. There's your sausage, roughly six, seven inches long. Put them to one side. We're going to work on this one here. And we're going to start off and we're going to divide it into three, roughly three equal parts. There you go. One, two, three. Somewhere close. Right then, so like I say, we're going back to your finger bandage. You've already tied the knot on the end of it and you've put it up your 22mm pipe and you sit like that. Get your finger bandage and plop it straight down. Look, that's already fell through for it. It's already there. So you pull that through a certain amount. Get it to the end, and what you're doing is you're tying a granny knot in at the end, like so. You pull it tight, you're there. You then cut, and I'm going to just plonk that into there, and I'm going to make a few just so you can get the gist of it. <clears throat> now, while the camera woman is watching me make these, I'll quickly just hear on. I know there's a load of people out there already know how to do this. I know these. I talk to them on a regular basis, a good few lads, and see what I'm making me cart, I'm going fishing tonight. But I'm keeping into account people that's never used cart. Now we've done a short video the other night. Steve pulled up, I think it was two minutes long. And the messages that we got off that about people want to know about cart. We're even getting people saying, what is cart? So it's obvious that some lads out there have, have never discovered it yet. Um, which is fine, it's, um, there's not, nothing wrong with that. They just uh, haven't heard of it, that's all. 
So what? Let's hope that this helps them on. These are going to treat these, yeah. Brilliant. So what? There's three done. Now I know lads that wouldn't dream of going fishing without cart. I know lads that can't stand it. I know lads that's never had a result on it. But like I say, I know lads also that wouldn't leave the house without it. Again, one, two, three. Straighten the bottom. I was a bit sceptical about this when I first come out. I mean, I'd used it for quite a while myself. Never heard anything getting caught there. Uh, sorry, never heard. I shouldn't say that. I wasn't catching anything on it myself. I was seeing people catching on it, I must admit. Um, there's a good few anglers around the doors I've seen uh, catching cod on it, and it wasn't happening for me. Then all of a sudden, out the blue, bang, it happened. And it changed my opinion of cod altogether. There's one of the, the admins that, uh, one of the admins of Sandman's Tattle Time, Dan Jones, um, cracking lad, he's uh, just gone back into the seaside of things and he's been coming down, getting himself some nice guy there, some couple of Zipnex 427 SUs, pen talks and that, so he's went and got the guy anyway, he's um, coming down with some uh, nice baitings of carton. He was getting some lovely fish out and we weren't. I was having blacks and everything and I was watch your secret and caught. Every time caught. And he was getting four and five pounders out. This is the time that's it. Gonna have to persevere and get to know this cart a little bit better, then all of a sudden it started to happen for me. So that was that. Anyway, I'm gonna stop there. I'll quickly pour a knot in that one because I can do the rest of them later on. All what I'm going to do is quickly talk about what we can do with these. Right, so, come back. Now we're going to talk about the baiting up. Here I've got a size 5.0 Sakuma Manteth Extra. There it is there. I've tied a little bit of mono on the end of it. That's all. Every time I've used cart, I think the smallest hook I've ever used to four. Four, five, or six, or I've seen that's right up to eight. Or use it, whatever your preference. Keep in mind, you're fishing for cod. They've got one big mouth on them, so that's that. Anyway, this is how I do my cart. Get your hook. There is your pellet of cart. I've got this one out the freezer. It's absolutely solid. I like to nick mine in the bottom like that. Sorry, like that. I should have said. There you go. Then that turns around to there. The next thing you're going to do is get your cotton. It's very simple. There's no rocket science in this at all. And you get your cotton. I'm just doing this quickly because there's another way you can do it. And you imagine I would have normally I would have went across that a load more. Um, I'd really bound it on. And there you go. That would be your cart bait. That's just simple cart. You could have. Um, rag above that, you could have blacks, log, whatever you want really, I, I, I must admit I'm a big fan of a black behind it, nice one of them Welsh blacks or wherever you're getting your worm from, right behind it, it seems to work for me. Anyway, I'm going to cut that and uh, I'll show you another way that you can do it, because sometimes what can happen is, when you've got it like that, your cart can twist on the hook. So you've got the hook like that, it can twist from time to time. Now if you want to stop that, I haven't got any copper cable. 
So I've got this stuff. This is telegraph, uh, telephone cable. It's the nearest thing I could find. Now what I always do is put the tel imagine this, this is copper cable. Imagine that being copper cable. That's the best thing to use. Pull it through the eye of the hook like that and wrap it round. Just loosely, as you can see I'm doing. Now, if this was copper cable, I'll snip that end off there, get rid of the excess. If that was copper cable, it would sit in situ better. But it stayed in place, and that's where you are. You've kept the barb of the hook completely free, nice and sharp, ready to go into the, the mouth. Now what you're going to do now is get the hook and put the hook straight on the side of the cart baiting. You're then going to get your cotton and you're going to repeat what I've just done a minute back. And that's bind it on. So we're there. Like so, I'm going to bind that on. And I'll, I'll do this one properly the way I would normally do if I was on the field. Yeah, sorry, if I was fishing. This is how many times I would bind it on. Nice and tight. So pretty tight, I've snapped it. And still turn a little bit, but maybe that's because I'm not using copper. I know you've got to use copper, and that's telegraph portable, eh, telegraph wire. Anyway, so I've gone round like that. As you can see, and that's the way, and that would stop twisting as much um, on there, and that's the way you would do your baiting, simple as that. You would bang that out, leave that out for, I don't know, some 20, uh, 30 minutes, 20, 25 minutes, whatever your preference, get it back in. I've tried the finger bandage, and after 20, 25 minutes, I've still had some cart in the bottom of it, it wasn't completely washed out. So I guess the, car, the, the finger band is, is, is the right gauze, it's letting the right amount through rather than just washing out straight away. Just before I go, if you're going to go for a say, I don't know, a six hour session and you're going to fish one rod, I would take a minimum of, I don't know, 12, 15, maybe 20 pellets, just in case you did get into some good fish and you were in and out a bit. Um, if you've bought a good flask, You'll not lose any because the stuff that you've got left over, if you have any left over, just pour it straight back in the freezer when you get home. But I must emphasise the point, if you go out and buy a cheap flask, that'll be mush when you get home. It'll just be liquid. No good in it, no boy. Anyway, that's as much as I can tell you on car. Basically, that's all I know about. That's, that's what I do. It works for me. It works for other lads. I say plenty of results on the stuff. It seems to be a crap and bait. I know there's people out there, like I say, don't like it and there's people that do like it. So that's that. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you're going to enjoy watching it as much as what I did making it. Just take care out there, be safe, and I'll see you all on the next episode of Sandman's Tackle Time. Bye bye. <laughs>